This may seem to be obvious to you, but oftentimes when you use a hole saw, you struggle to get through a piece of material. And I've noticed that the hole saw runs a lot more efficiently when it can exhaust all this material out the side. I know this isn't always possible because most of the time when you're using a hole saw, you want to drill right down the middle of the piece. But in this case, it's the hole itself that I'm interested in to, in order to make a drum sander. You can easily see just how much more effectively the hole saw works whenever I have a place where the hole saw can exhaust all of its sawdust. pilot bit for the hole saw was conveniently a quarter of an inch, which means I can use a quarter inch rod for my spindle. Now I want to draw out the spindle with a hole that's just big enough to accept this eight penny nail. Now you can see that I cut the eight penny nail and put it through the hole and it'll act as a pin that keeps it from slipping. I want the bottom of my drum sander to be flush so I'm going to have to make a notch for this pin. I would think that it's pretty important to go perpendicular to the grain to reduce the likelihood of it splitting. Now I can see that it's not spinning perfectly true, so I'm going to dress it up with a wood rasp, just as if it were on a lathe. I'm using a sanding block to finish truing it up. It doesn't have to be true up here or down here, only the flat edge that you use to sand with. Now I've put spray adhesive on both pieces. And now you can see why I made the little slot. And also how I cut a little bit of this material away to help smooth that bump over as the drum sander goes around. Now that I have a decent drum sander, I can go back to making my hourglass.
Thanks a lot for watching.